was out of my comfort zone right from the start. I would never recommend any filmmaker to work like that, but I like being pushed in ways I have not experienced before. Is what cinematographer Darius Conji said when describing what it was like to work with Josh and Benny Safdie on Uncut Gems. This also illustrates what the audience feels like when they watch the film. The Safdie brothers are known for their stress-inducing films, but how do they achieve that through cinematography? And how has their style developed throughout the years? In recent years, the Safdie brothers have made a name for themselves making anxiety-induced films with their distinct yet mesmerising cinematic style. And although their approach to the cinematography in their films has been consistent throughout the years, they have refined how they shoot a scene. If you look at their earliest feature film Daddy Longlegs, and even Josh's first feature, The Pleasure of Being Robbed, you can see that they use a telephoto lens for the majority of the movie, as well as using close-ups to make you feel more intimate with the characters. They have continued both of these characteristics in their cinematic style throughout the years, as with Uncut Gems, you find them utilising the exact same techniques. However, a major difference between their earlier films and their latter ones is the fact that their early ones feel a lot more like a documentary in the way that they were photographed, with more handheld movement, and a lot less stylized in the way that they were graded. This all changed when they hired their first director of photography, the talented Sean Price Williams. Heaven Knows What was their first time working with a dedicated cinematographer, as Josh had shot their three previous films. However, their style didn't change, but it felt much more refined. They kept the natural colours and long lenses from their first films, but it felt as though they were more prepared for Heaven Knows What. When Good Time came along, they switched up the process and went 35mm. Whilst they had shot several films in Sellywood before, this was their first time working with an actual budget, and they opted for the colourful Kodak 250D in daylight and bright 500T for night. Ultimately, the characteristics of how it was coloured changed and Good Time felt richer than their previous films. They have also had a consistent use of handheld movement throughout their filmography. Doing this helps them convey the stress that their characters may be feeling in that specific scene. Handheld heightens the intensity of a shot. For example, in Good Time, they utilised both the use of a tripod and handheld for the bank robbery scene. Here, the camera is static with smooth motions to show that they are the ones in control, but as soon as they take off the mask in the alleyway, we see the utilisation of handheld, showing that they are no longer in control. This is until they get into the taxi. Another thing to note would be that a lot of the time it feels as though you shouldn't be there, as if you were watching from the sidelines, like this scene in Lancard Gems, where Howard is punched in the face after the Opal auction, but because of both the depth in the frame and how busy the city is, it makes us, the audience, feel as though we are spying on him and shouldn't be there. When you are watching a film from the Safties, you tend to feel quite confined in the frame, this is down to their use of longer lenses and preference of close-ups, with them even going as far as to use telephoto lenses for establishing shots. You will rarely see a full shot throughout their movies, as it detracts from the anxiety-ridden scenes, but they also use it for this exact purpose, to de-escalate the audience after a tense moment in the film. For example, after Connie and Ray find the acid and go back to the security guard's apartment, they are kept in a more relaxed setting until the altercation between the two we are kept wide, but as soon as Ray starts drinking and talking to Connie, we are back into close-ups. Another common technique in cinematography is creating depth in the frame. You can do this a number of ways, but essentially it is having a foreground, midground and background to the frame. Even a simple shot like this from Uncut Gems uses the approach of having money in the foreground, held in the midground and New York in the background. Over the years, their palettes have changed, specifically their colour palettes, with their earlier films like Daddy Long Legs and Heaven Knows What having a very natural look to them, with maybe the odd scene having a splash of colour. Their latter films, such as Good Time or Uncut Jams, are much more colourful and vivid, and whilst a lot of this is down to the film stock that they used, they also experimented a lot more with colour and lighting in their scenes. Such as, in Good Time, there are many scenes where they have branched out from the natural look, like this scene in the Bell Bond shop where they opted for pink, or like in Uncut Gems where they have reinforced the natural occurring light but elevated the colours in post-production so that they aren't as muted as they were in their earlier films. 
Part of why their films are so intense to watch is the fact that you don't have a lot of breathing room when watching. Since the majority of their films are shot in close-ups, you're forced to look at what they want to show you. Your eye doesn't have a lot of room to wander. They have managed to create a very overwhelming atmosphere within their films, and this is pretty much all down to their love of close-ups. Symbolism plays a huge part in any type of creative work, but you can really express yourself when it comes to film. Frames within frames are a technique used by cinematographers to create depth in the image, but it also helps convey a certain feeling, like this shot from Good Time, where we are looking at Nick talking to his counsellor through the window, separating us from him. It is a point in the film where he is trapped both figuratively and literally. By creating a frame within a frame, this allows the directors to isolate the audience from the characters. They also use this technique later on in the film, once Connie is arrested and in the back of a police car. They separate us from him by using bars, showing that this is the end of the road for him, but they stay on this shot, slowly zooming into his face, until the bars are no more and he is left staring straight at us, until they match onto Nick, where it is the start of a long road for him. With bigger budgets comes better cameras, but more importantly, better film. Whilst I can't find the specific film that they used on Daddy Longlegs, I can tell you that they shot it on the Ariflex 416, a 16mm camera, but they printed it in 35 for distribution. However, heaven knows what, it's their only film that they shot on digital. They used the Sony F3, which boasts a Super 35 sensor with 10-bit 422 output, ideal for shooting on a budget. When it comes to lenses, like most directors, it varies from film to film depending on the genre and type of look that they hope to achieve. Whilst I can't find the specific ones that they used on their earlier films, I can tell you that they used Panavision C-Series on Uncut Gems, as well as the Zeiss Super Speed on Good Time. In an article about Uncut Gems, the cinematographer, Darius Conji, said that the normal lens was a 75mm anamorphic, but they loved using a 350mm, as well as several very long zooms. Whilst Good Time was shot on spherical, creating a very different look and ultimately a different feeling. The Safdie brothers are a couple of the most exciting new directors in Hollywood and over the past few years have really proven to everyone what they can achieve and it's incredible. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of how Josh and Benny Safdie shoot a scene. If there are any other directors that you would like to see analysed, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching.